Artists are often described as quirky, eccentric, or even insane. Their lives are usually unconventional and sometimes tragic. Some of these details end up left out of history books and art history classes. So here are 10 weird things you probably didn't learn about in art history. Number 10. Andy Warhol owned a human foot. Andy Warhol was a huge collector, although some might consider it hoarding. He created time capsules, which were cardboard boxes filled with a variety of items. Warhol put over 300,000 items in 610 capsules. The capsules included souvenirs, newspapers, product packaging, photos, things from Warhol's childhood, and a mummified human foot from ancient Egypt. The curator of anthropology at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History has guessed that he got it at a flea market, but no one knows for sure. All of Andy's capsule items can be viewed at the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is the largest museum in America devoted to a single artist. Bonus fun fact about Andy, his iconic hair was a wig. In fact, he owned about 40 of them. Number nine, the 15th century trend of nonchalantly dying. In the 15th century, a book called The Art of Dying was published. It was filled with illustrations of people dying while not looking particularly concerned about it. The idea was that if you're at peace with death, it will send demons back to hell, or something. It inspired other medieval artists to do the same thing, the message being, even if you're getting your head split open, you should just be cool with it, or whatever. Number eight, another weird medieval trend, evil snails. One can expect medieval art to feature knights in shining armor defeating dragons, but there was also a trend of artists depicting knights defeating snails. No one knows exactly why so much medieval artwork of knights versus snail exists, but it could be an example of medieval humor. Violent, slimy, medieval humor. Number seven, Salvador Dali's parents told him he was his dead brother. Before Salvador Dali was born, his parents had a son, also named Salvador, who died at a young age. Dali's parents brought him to his brother's grave and told him that he was the reincarnation of their first son. Dali felt his parents wanted him to be a replacement for his dead brother, and his eccentric behavior is a result of wanting to differentiate himself. He painted this portrait of his dead brother called Portrait of My Dead Brother. Dolly's style might suggest that the artist was fond of psychedelic drugs, but Dolly has said he never used any, but rather developed techniques to induce altered states of consciousness, and once said, I don't do drugs, I am drugs. Dolly was asked by Yoko Ono for a strand of hair from his famous mustache, and she was willing to pay for it. Dolly, thinking Yoko might be a witch who would use the hair in a ritual, instead sent a blade of grass. He made $10,000 off the transaction. Bonus fun fact about Dolly, he was expelled from art school, twice. Number six, Vincent van Gogh also had a dead older brother by the same name. Vincent van Gogh was born exactly one year after his stillborn older brother, also named Vincent. Van Gogh, like Dolly, struggled with the idea of being a replacement child. Both artists viewed their deceased brother as a twin or double a theme frequently incorporated in both artists' work. Number five, chimpanzee art. Congo, a chimpanzee that lived from 1954 to 1964, was taught how to paint and draw by zoologist slash surrealist painter Desmond Morris. Congo created over 400 pieces that are described as, quote, lyrical abstract expressionism. When a painting was done, he would refuse to add more even when encouraged, and when a piece was not done, he'd get upset if the piece was taken away. Morris noticed that Congo had a spatial awareness when it came to his compositions, and liked his pieces to be spatially balanced. Number four, Gustav Klimt used cat urine as a fixative. A fixative is a substance used to keep things in position or stick them together. Artists use fixative to seal, preserve, and protect their art from smudging or fading. 
Gustav Klimt, the renowned artist most famously known for the kiss, was a huge cat lover and always kept lots of them in his studio, and also believed that cat urine was the best fixative. Ultimately, it smelled terrible and actually destroyed some of his artwork. Klimt almost always wore artist smocks with nothing on underneath and fathered at least 14 children, which is surprising since he was a dude in a muumuu that smelled like cat pee. Bonus fact, the painting The Kiss initially stirred controversy because despite featuring two fully clothed people, the Victorians considered it to be pornographic. Number three, Michelangelo was extremely dirty. Renaissance artist Michelangelo, who actually started his career as a forger, hated bathing. He also hated washing and changing his clothes. His assistants hated working with him due to his offensive odor, and when he died, his clothes allegedly had to be peeled off. Number two, Chris Burden and his total disregard for his own safety. Chris Burden was a sculptor and installation artist. You may recognize his installation, Urban Light, located in Los Angeles. But his performance art is what he's most known for because of his blatant disregard for his own well-being. In 1971, he locked himself in a locker for five days for his master's thesis called Five Day Locker Piece. Also in 1971, he had an assistant shoot him in the arm with a rifle from 16 feet away. In 1972, he laid in the road covered with a canvas surrounded by flares. He was eventually arrested when people called emergency services thinking he was dead. In 1973, he fired a pistol at a Boeing 747 taking off at Los Angeles International Airport. In 1974, he had nails hammered into his hands while he laid on a VW Beetle. Being crucified on a Volkswagen wasn't enough, so in 1975, he performed what he called Doom, which was him laying on the floor of an art museum under a five foot by eight foot sheet of glass near a wall clock. The plan was to stay there until the museum employees decided his well-being was more important than the art. After 40 hours, museum staff finally consulted physicians, and another five hours after that, an employee put a pitcher of water within Burden's reach at which point Burden got up, smashed the glass, and broke the clock with a hammer, ending the performance. Bonus fact, Burden's Volkswagen crucifixion inspired the David Bowie song, Joe the Lion. But before I get to the last item on the list, here are some honorable mentions. Norman Rockwell tried to enlist in the military, but was rejected for being too underweight. Picasso had a pet monkey and carried around a pistol loaded with blanks to intimidate people who annoyed him. Caravaggio stalked a young painter for insulting him behind his back and attacked him with a sword. In 1900, Olympic winners were given valuable pieces of art instead of medals, and between 1912 and 1948, Olympic medals were given for sculpture and painting, as well as architecture and literature. Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa has her own mailbox at the Louvre for all of the fan mail that she receives. Finally, number one, Anna Mendieta was most likely murdered. Anna Mendieta was a Cuban-American sculptor, painter, performance artist, and video artist. In the 70s and early 80s, Anna was receiving recognition and awards for her unique art, such as her Silhouette series, which included this, this, and this. She was also known for her self-portraits, including these. In 1979, Anna met Carl Andre. Anna, who also took these amazing self-portraits, eventually wed Carl. Eight months into the marriage, on September 8, 1985, Anna, who was 36 years old, fell 33 stories to her death. Andre claimed she committed suicide, but neighbors heard the couple arguing and a nearby doorman heard a woman yell, no, 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 right before Anna died. Carl Andre had scratches on his forearm and nose, and the story he told police was different than what he told 911 dispatch. He was arrested and charged with her murder, but was later acquitted. Anna's death makes some of her work seem almost prophetic. Anna and her work are remembered for being bold and feminist. Those close to Carl Andre feel he isn't capable of murder, and those close to Anna say she wasn't suicidal. Her cause of death remains controversial. That was 10 things you probably didn't learn in art history. 